All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, we have a 2007, I believe, Toyota Tundra that just came in. Customer was sent here from a friend of mine's garage. And his complaint is that the battery goes dead every couple of days on the truck. He said if he drives it every day, it's fine. But if he lets it sit for two days, the truck goes dead. And he believes that it has a draw. So, um, as much as you guys love parasitic draw testing, what do we do? Where do we start? Well, what I wanted to talk about with this is I did not diagnose this truck yet. I just, uh, sorry, cameras. Ugh. Okay. I did not diagnose the truck yet. I just started to take a, a, a peek around and he had mentioned that it has a lot of aftermarket stuff in it. It has an aftermarket Kenwood radio, as you can see right here. And in the back, I don't know if you guys can see all that crap. It has a bunch of aftermarket junk. Yes, I believe it's all aftermarket junk. Uh, any kind of amps and radios and stuff like that in any of these vehicles is a uh, is, is looking as a glutton for punishment. He did not put it in, however. He disconnected the main feed, the heavy wire at the battery for the amplifier, so he took all of that crap out of the equation. Of course, not the radio, but the stuff in the back, the amplifier and all that, is not drawing definitely, so um, that didn't fix it. So at that point, I guess he gave up and he brought it in. Now, I just want to be clear here. Anytime I get a parasitic draw or a complaint of a parasitic draw battery going dead, the first thing that the customer says, and this is 99.9% .9 of the time, is I have a short. Um, that's their way of describing the draw, okay? They think they have a, um, you know, everything's a short. Now, what we have to do as technicians is decide how to test the truck and how to find out where the root cause of the problem is and fix it for him. Okay, I don't like jumping to conclusions and saying, well, okay, he's complaining that it's going dead every couple of days, so let me jump in and grab my amp pound and grab my, you know, my uh, scope or my meter and start looking for this draw. I like to do things in sequence, and it's very important that you do that because there are other things, other variables here that need to be considered. Number one, the battery. Okay, the battery is the heart and soul of the electrical system in the vehicle. How is it? And any parasitic drawer that I get, uh, regardless if it has a drawer or not, the very first thing that I do is test the battery condition. So I can't stress that enough. Don't get burned with a bad battery because low voltage in a circuit, low voltage in a vehicle due to a bad battery can cause modules to wake up, go crazy. Uh, it can cause all sorts of stupid things. Of course, it can also cause no starts, especially with variables in temperature or the weather such. If you have a weak battery, it may be able to start the vehicle sometimes and not other times. If you don't take my word for it, I don't know what to tell you, but that's the truth. So the first thing I did is I got my fluke. And again, everybody has their way of doing things, okay? He said he had to jump it when he brought it here. He drove it from, uh, he drove it a couple of miles to get here. so. It had plenty of time to charge if the alternator's working. Ugh. I'm going to get my meter. Oh, and I'm going to drop it. Yeah, let's try that again. I'm going to get my meter, which I have it already hooked up on the battery. I'm going to start this thing. If you notice, my, my battery voltage at rest here is just over 12 volts. This should be 12.6. So it's low. It's a little low. I'm not happy with that. Um, especially after I just shut it off and it was running and driving and charging. And it's dead already. It won't start. Okay, hang tight. i got to get a charger. All right, well... After giving the battery a good charge and checking the tires and making sure that the daylight savings time air has been put in, uh, all's good there. We're going to start this thing up now. This battery was up to 12.6 a few seconds ago. 
start it up. We'll see how it's charging. But I have my suspicions already on what's going on on this thing. I do have the heat on here. I have uh, holding the brake. I have the headlights on now. It's got those nice high intensity uh, lights in it. Aftermarket as well. And uh, we're charging eh, a little lower than I'd like. But it is holding. Put it in gear. These are all basic checks that I go through on any parasitic draw guy, so just bear with me. We're going to get to the point in a minute. Um, be thorough. So we're going to go outside right now. We're going to shut this thing back down. And what we're going to do first is we're going to check the battery itself. There's a nice view of the battery cables and some of the uh, aftermarket crap hooked up on here. I'm going to take my tester leads. We'll hook them up on the battery. And we're going to, let me set this up, battery, post, top post, regular. Cold crank and amp 710. We're gonna test. And there is your result. We have a junk battery. Sure, you guys that watch the channel know my drill here. Take my leads, amp settings, meters alerting me that I'm on the wrong setting. And let's see what happens. All right, guys, this is like some sort of curse or something because we do have a draw on this vehicle. It is not powered down. And if you would believe this, because I really don't, I mean, how lucky could one guy be the fuse that we have to draw on is none other than the infamous ECU B1 fuse, seven and a half amp, which if you watched my Lexus uh, RX330 video, that was the same fuse that made me absolutely sick last week on another truck. So I am <laughs> mentally, this is sort of a, a psych out, I guess. But this truck has a crap load of aftermarket stuff in it and it's been sitting here for a while and I'm going to grab the thermal camera. God help me. Huh. That's interesting. Do we have water damage in this truck too? Do we have the uh, same crap going on here? Let's check the power windows. Well, at least they're not functioning by themselves. That's a good sign. Or is it? All right. <clears throat> so what I did here, and the reason I did is because it's aftermarket. I went to this radio, and I disconnected it, and it made no difference on my draw. Okay? My draw is still 120 milliamps. Now, that may not seem like much to you guys, but as I've said in the past, 50 milliamps is my spec that I shoot for on every car that has a drain. Um, this, is not, this is not passable. This has a small drain. With a good battery, this guy would probably never know the difference if he drove the car every other day, okay? That's the fact of it. But there is a problem here, and the fact that it's on ECUB fuse is just a uh, kick in my ass because it's too soon, man. It's too soon for that. Now, if you notice here, I pulled the panels down and the reason behind that is because, like I said, this thing has a ton of aftermarket crap in it. So, 
what I was uh, what I was doing was looking to see what is under this dashboard. And there's alarms and remote starters and all kinds of other crap. And um, I want to get in here and look and see if I see anything. And I'm going to give you guys a shot of this in a second if I can just get in there and take a quick look. I'm looking at that alarm module in the back. see. Doesn't look warm, but I do see all sorts of fuses. It's going to be hard for me to get you guys a shot in here, so you're going to have to forgive me, but I'm going to just try to get back here the best I can. And there's two few there's three Three fuses that I see. <clears throat> I'm going to pull one out. That helped. All right, guys. So after pulling this fuse out, out of that, uh, out of one of the multiple alarm and aftermarket crap modules that they have in here, I'm going to show you where we're at. Zoom in on the meter. Oops. Let's try to do that. And there you can see the meter and where we are. So like I said before, that was still high. But after it powered down for a few minutes, we were able to verify that the drain is uh, this 15 amp. And mind you, let me just show you something, if I may. You notice this fuse, you notice it's clear. What do I always tell you guys? That is junk. Chinese cheap junk fuses. Don't use them. Uh, these will come with the alarm kit and that will verify that it is cheap Chinese junk. Uh, just, to, just like the fuse. I don't like aftermarket stuff. I don't especially don't like when you see crap like this. This is the back of the radio. Um, the wiring under the dash, I'm not even going to bother to show you. It's an absolute train wreck. Uh, module wiring is cut and tapered with and uh, uh, tampered with and um, they have uh, they have tied into that you know the, the body electrics in the vehicle uh, yeah so this is obviously aftermarket it's got a remote start and this does not function anymore apparently because the door locks no longer works, so I'm assuming that fuse that I yanked out is for this, and it's staying that way. Um, I'm not here to decipher the crap that they put in aftermarket. I'm here to fix the problem with the truck, and in this case, taking that crap out is fixing it. So that's pretty much it for this one. I'm going to button it up. I'm going to call him up. He needs a battery uh, because if he does not change the battery, obviously the 
fixing the drain on here is not going to do very much with 200 cold cranking amps and um, let's see where he wants to go and that's it I'll see you guys in the next one